I'd like to speak to you about the first beat of Claire de Lune. And of course I'm speaking about the beat that's not played, because we often forget this beat entirely. And we need to bear this in mind because this initial rest gives a lift to the tempo. It's marked andante très expressif, but it is indeed an andante from the Latin andare, meaning to walk. So we shouldn't play this beginning too slowly as we often hear it played, because the phrasing is much more complicated and doesn't have the suppleness necessary if the tempo doesn't move forward. And that's especially true when we get to the en animant section at the bottom of the second page. If the tempo at the beginning is too slow, there will be too great a difference in tempo between these two sections. So remember this first beat. Breathe with it. And the second beat as well. so that you can immediately get the beat in mind. I'm not going to speak extensively about the character of this piece. I'm rather going to give you some advice about the pedaling and fingering, which might prove to be difficult. What is difficult is to play this beginning in a very expressive way, but not overly rubato. Nonetheless, your beat should be supple. We shouldn't play in this fashion because it's not marked rubato. So give some breathing room to these phrases. Move into the light with these phrases, even at the beginning. Think of this as a beautiful moon ray. When the phrase is longer, in this section, for instance, there's some give in the phrase. The beginning is not quite at the same tempo as the end, but we're not overly rubato either. Of course not. But there should be a bit of give. And the same thing here. Perhaps a bit calmer, more dolce. This is one long phrase that is a long diminuendo with its high point practically at the beginning. Make sure that you think about the proportions between the different layers of sound. The left hand should not have exactly the same timbre and color as the right hand. And in the second bar, with the harmony in the left hand, which should sound like a question mark, so it should be slightly diminuendoed. Make sure that the repetitive formulae in here, there's a number of them, like this, Make sure that you give these a lot of phrasing. I have two proposals for the fingering, one for the right hand and one for the left hand. In the thirds, in measure two,
I would propose 1, 3, 2, 5 and not 1, 3, 2, 4. It's better for the balance in the hand and for the timbre of the melody. When you get back to the E flat, then you substitute 1, 3 and 2, 4 so that you can continue with 1, 3 in the following bar. Then a substitution again, exactly the same. You land with 1, 3, and then you substitute 2, 4 in order to continue. The second proposal is from this point. I would propose that you take the dotted halves and the quarters with the left hand. Up to here, and then you can play it as written. This gives the right hand the freedom to be expressive. And of course, this passage is played with both pedals, the sustain and the soft pedal. You can keep the pedal down throughout the first bar. And then in the second bar, E, F, E, I don't keep the pedal down all the way. It's nice to alternate this sort of murky sound with more clarity. With the pedal, we can hear the harmonics, but we should never drown out the melody. And especially when there's stepwise motion, we don't want this in the pedal. It sounds bad.